Welcome back, budget builders. Thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, my name is Trill, and today I have the latest updates from Washington. As you guys know, the main news of the week has been the negotiations over the reconciliation bill, as well as the stimulus packages that are associated with it. Now, all of those debates are still going on right now today, but yesterday, another potentially major bill was proposed by Connecticut legislator John Larson that would find bring some major changes to Social Security. It's called the Social Security 2100 Act, a sacred trust. Now, some of you might be scratching your head saying that, hey, didn't they already try that bill a few years ago? Well, you might be right, as this is a revision of the Social Security 2100 Act that was first announced back in 2019. However, the benefits in this revision are even bigger this time. Now, before we get into what's exactly in this bill, I wanted to quickly let you guys know and hear from John Larson himself on why this bill is so important. So don't go anywhere and quickly listen to exactly what he has to say. Check it out. Good afternoon. I'm John Larson, Chairman of the Ways and Means Subcommittee on Social Security. This afternoon, we gather in the historic Ways and Means Committee Room to roll out and introduce Social Security 2100, a sacred trust. Here's the deal. The majority of Americans, including 75% of independents, 78% of Democrats, and 79% of Republicans, feel leaders in Washington do not understand how hard it is for Americans to save for retirement. People's skepticism is validated by congressional inaction. It's been 50 years, let me repeat that, 50 years since Congress has enhanced Social Security benefits and 38 years since it has taken any comprehensive action. So that was John Larson giving some background on why this bill will be so necessary for so many American people. The credit for that clip goes to John Larson and the link to his speech is on Facebook Live and can be found in the description down below. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the big ticket items that are included in this package. By far the biggest part of this bill is that it would set a higher minimum benefit for low income workers. The benefits would be changed so that they are set at a 125% above the federal poverty level. As of 2021, the federal poverty line is at $12,880. So just to do some quick math for you guys so that you don't have to do it for yourself. If we multiply that by 125%, the bill promises that we can get $16,100. And if we spread that out on a monthly basis, the minimum benefit someone could receive per month under this bill is $1,341. This would be a pretty significant change from the current payments that are received, especially for people who are currently getting payments that don't even meet the federal poverty level. Now, in addition to that, there's another provision in this bill that would likely raise benefits by another 2%. To do this, the bill proposes to reform the way that cost of living adjustment is actually calculated for Social Security beneficiaries. This probably won't surprise many of you, but the current way it's calculated does not really reflect the cost of living for most low income beneficiaries. Annual cost of living adjustments would be tied to the consumer price index for the elderly or or the CPIE. The CPIE takes a more specialized look at the day-to-day -day expenses the average senior faces, not just for average Americans. The argument is that this experimental index may better reflect the real costs that our seniors face. Now, is a 2% increase going to fix everything? No, but every little bit does count, right? And then the third big component of this bill is aimed at addressing one of the biggest questions surrounding Social Security. When will the money start to run out? That's everyone's question, right? Well, this new version of the Social Security 2100 Act 
follows the Social Security Administration's latest estimates that the trust funds that support the program will be depleted in around 13 years. At that time, in 2034, only 78% of promised benefits will be payable. To put it in another way, 20% of benefits will have to be cut in just 13 years if nothing else is exchanged to the Social Security program. Now, Larson's bill proposes extending that date to 2038 to give Congress a little bit more time to come up with a long-term solution to the program's solvency issues. Again, this won't directly fix any of the root problems, but rather provide a little bit of extra cushion to sort them out this full list of benefits is actually quite extensive. There are a whopping 17 total proposals in this bill in addition to the three big ones that I just filled you guys in on. Some of these other changes in the bill include extending benefits for students up through age 25, as well as increasing certain widows and widowers benefits, boosting beneficiaries benefits after 15 years, as well as eliminating a five month waiting period to receive the disability benefits and also to create caregiver credits so that the retirement benefits of those who take time out of the workforce are not reduced. It would also require the SSA or the Social Security Administration to mail paper statements to all workers ages 25 and up unless they request electronic delivery. Now, I'm sure that's overwhelming to hear all of this information, but I'm just trying to give you guys a sense of how comprehensive that this bill really is, as well as how important it could be if the bill is actually passed. Now, if you want to go ahead and look at a full list of these proposals that are included in this bill, you can go ahead and go to John Larson's website and I will include a link down below in the description so that you can have easy access to it. Now, one of the other things to note about this bill is that many of the proposals match a lot of President Biden's campaign promises and the goals he's been advocating for since taking office. So we should be able to expect that proposal will be getting Biden's full support. In addition, it seems as though the support for this revised bill has already matched the support for the first draft from 2019, and it's only been one day since they've introduced this bill. And this means that the bill likely already has the backing of over 200 members of Congress, which is a great sign, guys. However, I don't want to act like this bill is a done deal by any means or be one of those people that tries to make it seem like just because a bill is proposed, it means it's going to be passed. Now, this proposal will likely face a lot of obstacles from Republicans in Congress, but it does seem much more likely that this bill will get bipartisan support compared to the 2019 version. Also, you guys, you shouldn't expect much more movement on the Social Security bill until the reconciliation bill and the stimulus packages negotiations are finished and those proposals have been passed, since that is definitely a higher priority for Congress at this time. Either way, guys, hey, all of this is still big, big, big news for Social Security. So be sure that you stay tuned for more updates. But anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. Now, if you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see more, hey, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like this video, then go ahead and hit the like button for us. It definitely helped this video out. It also tells YouTube to share this video with others. Again, as always, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.